Um, my name is Lacey Lennon and I am 22 years old and I, I'm not really, I would say like from just one specific place. I grew up a military brat, but I mainly did live in both of the Carolinas and that's where most of my childhood memories come from. So, but I got to live in quite a few places. So that was awesome. <laughs> so I started in the adult industry when I was 18 actually, because I wanted to be in the adult industry. Oh, you know, before 18. <laughs> and so, but of course I waited and, you know, cause, um, but I had first started out just with camming and I did it very lightly and I really wanted my family, you know, approval. And, you know, so it's just like, unfortunately it's like I did it, you know, to make some extra money and I wanted to slowly do it. Um, but you know, my family's reactions, you know, just by just doing cam was so extreme and I cared because I have a very small family and and so it's just like, I cared, you know, I just, I wasn't, you know, I, I thought of it like a regular career and, you know, so it's like, for me, I took it a little bit seriously and I was like, oh, they don't like that either. And I'm just like, is there something else that I can do? And at that moment I was in college as an opera major. And so it's like, for me, it was helping me earn that extra income that I needed. And I was like, why can't I do both? Because I've always been obsessed with singing, the dancing, you know, burlesque, but also, you know, that whole, you know, just erotic model you know the porn as well but I loved all of it just like those like you know sex icon you know females that just embody it all and they're performers but they're also just sexual beings themselves and they're just you know and so that's something that I wanted and unfortunately my like family wasn't getting that so at 18 I was you know very in and out of the camming and then I took a break and I was working regular jobs which is totally fine I love them um and then I started stripping for a little while this is around age 19. Um, and when I wasn't a very good stripper, <laughs> I'm just going to be really honest. And I think that I, I was a good stripper, but there are just some girls that are just dancers. And, you know, I think that they were amazing and they could really get into it. And so it's just like, I would go home, you know, with like a lot less money. And so I would always try to lean back on the camming, but like my parents would freak out about me being on the internet again. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm just like, man, I'm sorry, but I, I keep getting and I'm just like, I'm not in trouble, you know, it's like, I'm not doing anything wrong, you know, um, and so my parents started easing a little bit more on it, so at this time, when I was, you know, in college and everything, I was located in Nevada, and I was really hurting for money, and my parents are wonderful parents, and I love them, you know, still, like, dearly, and they know about, like, everything, they're, they're really amazing, they're, <laughs> they don't approve, but they're also kind of, like, what are we supposed to do, and they're just, like, you're the wild, you're a wild child, there's, like, there's no stopping you, so they're, like, please just be safe, and, you know, I check in with them, I talk to my mom, like, every other day, so we have a great relationship, you know, sometimes we fight, like, sisters, you know, more so, so, I am around age 20 now and I'm really hurting for money, you know, unfortunately, and my parents aren't able to help me nor is, you know, and I'm not trying to lean on another family. Um, and I have a girlfriend who was in school with me and she had told me, why are you crying about living off of $20 a week when you could be working at the bunny ranch? She goes, look how beautiful you are. She's like, it's literally right down the street. There I go and I meet Dennis Hoff and I worked at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch for, and I lived and worked there for about a year straight and it was wonderful. So Dennis passed away in October of 2018 and that was last, you know, last fall and that is when I made my debut to porn and it was at the beginning of November of 2018 and so here I am now. <sighs> Everybody says that we're all friends and that we're all, you know, it's just like all, all of us are all kumbaya, we all love each other and this and that, but really it's just like there's there's so much more of that competitive side and so like a lot of times we put on these facades to, you know, the social medias and we're painting this like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful green grass, but I always love to say it's just like mm, our green grass, it, it does have a fresh, you know, paint of, you know, green, you know, paint on there right now. It's just like that's why it looks so green is just like because we're just repainting it every single, you know, every every other day and the reality of it is, is like you know things that I wish for us and you know that I want us to have more of is you know maybe like a little bit more rights a little bit you know less shame a little bit you know maybe like healthcare. maybe stop you know hating you know you know not being 
you know, so supportive of each other and, you know, like via social media and like actually acting like it's, you know, like a real job instead of, you know, crying to the social media as being like, my account got taken down. And I'm just like, okay. I'm just like, that's why we're not taken seriously though, because if that's just about it, because you know what real businesses do? Real businesses, when they fail, they start back up. They go down and they start back up. They don't cry. They don't go like, who are they supposed to cry to? Because it's a regular job, you know? And so if we want to be treated that way, um, I think that we also need to, what we, you know, give is what we get back is just kind of, so it's just like people need to, I think they need to stop, you know, lying to themselves and being a little bit more in denial and kind of, you know, clean themselves up just a little bit. And then also be maybe a little bit more honest with the people around us, because then I think that we would have more support and more love, even from the communities that aren't the sex worker community. Sometimes, actually, some, sometimes it is. Sometimes, oh man, sometimes it really it just depends, you know, it really, for me, whenever I sit down with my talent, whether they're male or female, I, uh, you know, we go over our no list and, you know, I go over generally 99% of the time my no list is just don't degrade me. I don't want to feel like I'm less than you. I want, I, you know, I love if I'm going to be a little bit more submissive or if I'm just going to be submissive, that's totally cool, but I don't want to be degraded, you know, and I don't want to feel like I'm not worthy or that like I've earned, you know, the right to be like with this individual. And I'm just like, I don't want to go there unless, you know, I'm with somebody who I feel extremely, you know, in my personal life with. But other than that, that we never even cross, I've never even come across that, you know, anybody trying to do that. And that's always been on my no list, but it's nothing that anybody's ever done in the porn industry, which is quite wonderful. <laughs> I'm like in the real, like real world, some of those people, like, <laughs> you're like, what are you doing? Why are you putting your foot on my face? Like you haven't even washed your feet. Like I'm just like, come on. I'm like, that's crazy. Um, but there are some people that you just have such amazing chemistry with, you know, on set that, you know, when I give them that no list of just don't degrade me and we ask, you know, the director, what are you looking for? What type of vibe? And then we kind of get into that moment because sometimes they really are just looking for a very fun, you know, gonzo, go crazy, you know, and then other times they really do want a passionate, you know, type of scene. And so I don't like to give a lot of no's because I don't want them thinking too much. I want us to be as natural and organic. So for me, um... I allow each one of my scenes to be as organic as possible. So it's really actually up to our honest chemistry that this person, you know, whether that is more than one person or just, you know, her and I or, you know, him and I. Um, so it's, it's just kind of like that. No, not at all. Actually, I'm a little, a lot of people you know, I walk out on the streets and people just, you know, call me darling, a little kiddo. And I'm over here like, I'm <laughs> just like, you don't even know. So I do have a partner in my life and I always make sure, well, cause like right now, like he works in and out of town and everything. Um, so, but whenever he is in town and if I have work that day, if I don't have work that day, like we're already, you know, fucking just simple, just done. Like I'll wake him up morning head. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm like, good morning. And, but if I have work, I generally have sex before work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have sex before and after work of course like I clean up and everything and like I'm not you know walking around generally with a cream pie you know so I'm not about to do that but it's just like you know it's just like if I'm horny I'm horny and it's just like you know I have such a sex drive and you know it's just like I know you know how to make myself come and everything and um so yeah I can have sex like all day <laughs> so it doesn't it doesn't take anything away from us at all I think my private life sex is a little bit more vanilla, actually, just because and you know, porn, there's a lot of times where they need the angles, they need you to open up, they really, you know, they want really good shots, you know, and for me, um, I really like, you know, the intimacy, you know, if I'm going to be, well, I mean, there are some sets where they do allow that and they don't need you to open up or anything, but they're like one in every like 100. Um, 
but in my personal life I think that I'm very close in like the positions that I like like one of my like favorite positions like if I get to be lazy <laughs> is like lay on my stomach and like I'll put a butt plug in my butt and then like I'll have like my Hitachi wand and I'm laying on my stomach and then so like I have my Hitachi wand like down on like my clit and then I have like a butt plug in and then I'm laying down so like lazy doggy and then like being penetrated from the back and it's just like I love that you know and then it's like even whether it's by like a man or a woman and even like if she had like a strap on like I really like I love that feeling of like being really close and like being held and it's almost kind of like being spooned but it feels better than if we were to do it in spoon you know I remember when I was a really, you know, young girl and, like, I was just flipping through, you know, magazines and, you know, seeing as I'd stolen, you know, these explicit magazines and I was looking through them and I just saw these women and I thought they were so beautiful and, like, you know, I matured, like, a lot later, you know, puberty and everything and which is totally fine but it's, like, for me, I wasn't envious. I just longed, you know, to be, like, one of these women and I was just like that. I was just, like, I didn't think of them as slutty. I didn't think of them as like bad or anything. I just, I thought that that's what it embodied to be a confident woman who knows who she is, won't, you know, if she says no, the answer's no. It's just like, or if somebody else says no, she's not going to take that no for an answer, you know? So it's just, it's kind of like that. And so for me, I think porn has helped, you know, with like my confidence and just like securing like who I am as a person and really allowing me to, you know, figure out, what it is that I want to explore, you know, in my life and understanding like who I want to become and how I might be able to get there without, you know, feeling that I need to lean on other people. And at 22, like I couldn't have asked her anything better because, you know, it's like with somebody who doesn't have a lot of, you know, people in her life and everything like that, the person I need to lean on is myself. So it's like, and if I'm not strong, then it's just like, you know, what I'm going to lean on is just going to fall. But, you know, porn has helped me, you know, build that really strong, you know, it's not a wall of bad things. It's, it's, it's a good wall, actually. It's not like, you know, I know a lot of people say like, oh, people build up walls. But for me, it's, it's a different type of wall. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I think that, unfortunately, um, uh, there's like, I made a mistake, like, you know, from like the beginning of my career was that I listened to a lot of other people about health wise. And like my biggest advice for girls is never use the douche ever. <laughs> That's like the biggest health thing that I could say, you know, it's like mentally I'm doing great, but like the only thing that I wish I could help, like my kitty girl, like down there a little bit more is douching is the worst thing that you could ever do for your vagina. <laughs> It really is. So that's like my only advice. I'm like, if there's any like guys out there that they see their girlfriends doing it, like they need to stop, like <laughs> throw it away, burn it. <laughs> like You will save her. You will have a lot more sex if she doesn't do that. Okay. That's how I feel. Always listen to your body. I think that's also like my other biggest advice. Like if you feel that something is wrong, like get it checked out immediately. Don't even wait. Don't hesitate because your body is your brand. And you know, so it's like, I, I hate to say body, you know, is your brand because some people take that in such a negative, you know, connotation as well. But your body is your brand. And without your body, like you can't be a performer. It's just, you know, a dancer. Their body is also, you know, their brand. So it's just like if they didn't have their body, they also couldn't be a performer. And so it's like you really need to take care of yourself and yourself does come first no matter like what anybody tells you puts in your ear tells you oh you'll be a star anything like that um I just wish that people would care just a little bit more about themselves than what they they could be Um, for me, Riley Reed was always a really big one. Um, and then Joanna Angel <laughs> was also a big one. Um, I think, you know, I, I want to say Lisa Ann, but, um, I feel like I need to meet her now <laughs> because I thought that was so funny because that's all of like growing up and everything, you know, my friends would always tell me, of course, when I say growing up, I'm just like, I have to remember, like, I'm just 22. So it was just a few years ago. <laughs> Um, but my friends would always like, they'd be like, oh, you're like a super young version of Lisa Ann. And I always thought that was so funny. And so like, I always watched like a lot of her stuff and like her Sarah Palin. I thought that was hilarious. And then, but it's just like now like coming into the industry, it's just like, now I need to like meet the people that I've idolized because <laughs> I used to idolize so many other ones. And now that I've met them, I'm kind of like, ah. <laughs> Tell me. 
10 years. I've had a lot of people tell me that I shouldn't direct. And I think that's really funny, but I think that's something that I want to do. Um, you know, and this is in like 10 years. I hope in 10 years that I, you know, I'm directing of, you know, hopefully my own company. Um, I really think that would be really amazing. I have lots of really cool ideas and, um, I don't want to give any away because people might steal them, <laughs> but it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, but I've already actually been writing scripts and everything. Um, but I don't want to, you know, push them out until, you know, or give them to anybody because I want to, you know, do my own production. So even if I have these rough drafts of scripts and they're just piled up, you know, in 10 years, it'll be great to, you know, have like my own little collection. Cause I love to write like erotic, like novels and blogs and things of that sort. So I hope that I'm doing that in about 10 years. That would be wonderful. Um, I also hope that, you know, maybe I'll have a podcast or, you know, maybe I'll be able to be some sort of speaker advocate for sex education because people aren't going to stop having sex. I'm just going to be really honest. <laughs> there are, it's, it's literally been proven that there are more millennials than there are baby boomers now, which means all of our parents were having so much sex you know, and, uh, you know, everybody older than them are having all so much sex that there's so many of us now. <laughs> there's more. So nobody's going to stop. There's only going to be more sex. So it's just like, why not have a positive, you know, role model? And it sounds weird. It's like a positive role model for sex. Well, guess what? Your kids are going to do it. Just don't know what else to say. So why don't we make it safer? Why don't we make it, you know, a little bit more, you know, out in the open and normalize it? Because, you know, when you take something away from a kid, then they want to sneak behind your back and do it even more. But if you put it all out on the table, then people are like, oh, you know, Europeans that they can, you know, drink when they're a lot younger. And they come to America and they're 21, you know, I went to college and, you know, these people, they're really, some of them, you know, they, they would go ham every once in a while, but like 90% of the time there's like, oh, it's just liquor. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. They would go out and have a good time, you know, every once in a while, but they weren't trying to, not like an American who just turns 21, you got to drink for like two weeks straight before, you know, but before they're like, all right, I think I'm going to take some time off. And then like still their year, they're 21 is insanely full of liquor, you know? And so... I think if we normalize it and put it more out on the table and like we're willing to teach and, you know, show people the realities of, and then STDs as well. I, you know, it's not something that people want to talk about, but you know, it's just like, there's a lot more. I just think that it would be really nice to have a podcast out there, like, you know, to talk about this with people, to bring in people that they really enjoy, um, you know, just to talk about sex just in general, you know, to get more people, you know, even to persuade people to get more in the research for, you know, STD research and, you know, maybe inspire them by the podcast and making people understand, hey, we are having some of these issues that nobody wants to talk about because they're judged about it. So it's just like, but if we normalize it, then maybe we'll have people you know, out there that'll be like, hey, I want to be an STD researcher because I think that this is really important and I think that we could really be saving a lot of people and doing really good um, instead of, you know, people, you know, trying to get the biggest Brazilian butt lifts or, you know, things of that sort. It's just like instead with our community, we could push it, you know, for doing something like that. Um, so yeah, so I hope that I'm directing maybe a podcast. Um, I'll probably wait for my 20 year, let my life grow for some. I would love to have a book one day. Um, I have a lot of really fun stories. 